Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time to listen today. I title this message, Making Excuses for the Enemy. Making Excuses for the Enemy. The enemy, I will define in this audio message as anyone who simply doesn't like you, disrespects you, you suspect has some shady ways about him or her. The enemy can be anyone who is close to you or anyone who is far from you. But you've heard through the grapevine, this person simply has a problem with you. Now, there are those who don't want to face the fact that they have enemies because they want to just appear in the public as being a likable person, right? They want to win the favor of the public. They want to achieve certain status, things, win trust. So if they were to admit, yes, I have enemies, they feel as if individuals will think, hmm, well, what did you do in order to have these enemies? Can I tell you that you don't have to do anything for somebody not to like you, not to care for you? You don't have to do anything for a person to be jealous of you. I remembered a female who could not stand me. I was troubled by her because I was trying to figure out what did I do? I had other people thinking, analyzing with me as to what I could have said or did for this female not to like me. And then as time went on, we found out the person had a mental illness. She had issue with everybody. She eventually became most people's enemy. The only reason why others she didn't have issue with is because they didn't spend enough time with her to find her out. She... (laughs) Uh, She didn't have them on her radar because they weren't trying to be in her face, but for so long because they picked up that something's not right with her. But I didn't pick up at the time because I wasn't discerning like I am nowadays. I just thought she was okay. She was all right, but she was troubled. Come on. And your enemy is troubled in mind, possibly in body and in spirit. So here there's this enemy and there is this tempting situation where you don't want to say that you have an enemy. You don't want to acknowledge. You don't want to talk to anybody about it. You don't want to go through proper protocol to expose an enemy. Okay. And for some who they just cannot wrap their heads around the fact that they have an enemy, they make excuses for an enemy so this enemy who has stolen who's lied who's robbed who's hurt other people but not you yet you're gonna make excuses because you got feelings for this person okay now I say you but it could be somebody else and we could talk about that other person who makes excuses for the enemy she says oh no he would never do that but he did he says Oh, no, she's not that kind of person, but she did. And this infuriates many of us when we say that this person, I know you care for them. You take, you know, these breaks with them. You know, uh, this person is a kind soul or a genuine whatever. You know, all these flowery words people use for the enemy. (laughs) And I laugh because... I just don't get it sometimes with some folks. You know that you said the other day you don't like them, but yet you're making excuses. Okay. All of this, though, that they do, they're deceiving themselves, the Lord says. They're deceiving themselves and they're trying to get you to do the same thing, deceive yourself. But the Lord says, keep your head. This is somebody's word. Keep your head. Keep your head on straight. Don't fall for the flowery speeches. I know that even the enemy himself, herself, seem to be trustworthy, kind, considerate. But there's a group of people that's warning you about that enemy. 
He's going to play two different sides, two different faces, because that face right there, that's the authority face. <laughs> These people are responsible for, you can fill in a blank, his housing, his car, his money, you know, his family. So he's going to wear a different face with them. But these other people who he's not that close to and he's not relying on them for anything, he got a totally different face. And those folks deem him as an enemy. I had some people warn me about an individual. Told me straight up that the person was racist. And I was like, no, it can't be. I mean, because I talked to this person. Yeah, but see, nowadays, <laughs> people are very clever in how they do things because they know that they will lose if they show too much of themselves, how they really feel, especially if you're in a position of power. So, of course, there's going to be two faces or three faces or five different faces, depending on who the people are that they're trying to impress while they go home and they call <laughs> those people every name under the sun while they talk among their friends about this one and that one and how they can't stand or they hate. Even the enemy knows that you're not going to be able to win people by being mean and ugly and nasty. If I want to win your trust, even though I don't like you, I've got to put on airs. I got to put on a false front. This is what so many individuals do. And those who are naive and gullible and who want to believe that everybody is so wonderful and sweet and nice, they will make excuses for the enemy, defend the enemy while offending you who bring the truth. They will defend the enemy while offending you who brings the truth. Do you know who this person is? Yes, I know. Okay, how? How you know him? Well, you know, he knew somebody that I grew up with and then eventually we started talking and he's a decent person. Well, did you know he did A, B, and C? No, he wouldn't have done that. Okay, see, now you're in denial. What? You didn't even listen to the facts. You didn't even bother to do your research. What is this person holding over you? They're not holding anything over me. I just don't believe they would do that. But you got to give me something. Well, I mean, I mean, we had great conversations. That's not good enough. Well, I went out with him a few times. That's not good enough. Well, uh, you know, I know his wife. Okay, well, maybe we're on to something. Now tell me, what has his wife said? Well, mm, and then you do some research, right? And let's just find out. Let's pretend like we found out that the wife ended up being abused by the individual. So then why would you be so quick to say that you know this person and he would never do? You see? Because people are so quick to say things because they just don't want to either one bother to find out the truth. They feel like it's not their business. They feel like you're a troublemaker or whatever else. And so why can't we just get along and be done with this? Some people, we just cannot get along and just be done with it. God himself will move on our spirit and say that this is not a person who you want to do business with. This is not a person who's going to treat you right. This is not a person that's going to be respectful of your time, your patience, you know, the, any of it. So we've got to take the blinders off, Christian. <laughs> As I've said in other audio, some say they're Christian, but I can't tell. Because whenever there's money involved and there's opportunity and there's groups and associations and all of this stuff that's going to bring something to the table, especially with some of these Christian leaders, they're like, he's not so bad. Or, you know, you don't want to read too much into something or she's a decent person. Give her, give her a chance, but look at the writing on the wall. Look at their decisions. Look at the things that they've said. Look at the... <laughs> Things that they claim they know. Talk to the people who know them well and claim that they're good and decent. But also talk to the people who know them well that claim that they're not good and decent. Let's get, let's get both sides of the story. Not just what you like or what makes you feel good. People so caught up in their little five senses. They don't look beyond the natural. And that is why they end up voting for who they vote. Uh oh, yes, we're going to go there. Oh, I was with you until you started getting political. Somebody said in a couple of my messages, well, let me tell you something. God doesn't just limit us to topics, certain topics like man does and like uh, puppets do. 
Come on. Because some folks are controlled. That's why they cannot speak certain things. We got folks who they will side with an enemy or many enemies because there is something in it for them. There's something in it for them. There are people who claim that they love folks and they care for people. But at the end of the day, they don't love and care for nobody but themselves or those that they consider their favorites. Everybody knows certain names that's out there in mainstream media. But do those people know your name? Do they know your name? So just as they're going to be guarded, if you were to show up and say, oh, I'm your biggest fan or I loved you or I've been supportive of you, you should be guarded about them. Because we don't know everything about everyone who comes in our presence. If somebody was a shop at your workplace and you were responsible for interviewing them, just because you talk to them for five minutes doesn't mean that you know them. Making excuses for the enemy saying that the enemy would never. Making excuses for the enemy saying that, well, you know, look at all of these wonderful things he or she did. But yeah, for every great thing they did, they also did something that was terrible. That's why a lot of times people do so many wonderful things because they know that they've done a lot of dirt to other folks. And they don't like to feel guilty. <laughs> Who does? So do a whole bunch of nice things to make up for that bad or many bad things that you've done. Making excuses for the enemy claiming that you love somebody, right? Okay, you love somebody. I get it. But look at what this person has done to other people. They may even love you too, right? The enemy may love you too. But look at what they did to these other people though. So because they didn't do it to you, they get the pass. Ooh, God's challenging us. Come on, stay with me. I've got some other examples that's going to step on some people's toes. So that particular faith that you are part of, denomination, religion, what have you. And you know the history. You know what they stand for. And it's not good. But because you're not directly impacted by what they've done Okay, well, I guess it's okay. It's all right. And so you sit up there and you're standing before audiences and you're making excuses for the enemies, the enemies. You're making excuses for the Pharisees uh oh, and the Pharisee minded thinkers, the self-righteous individuals. You're making excuses for your governments. You're making excuses for your children who many may have deemed enemies because they can't seem to get their act together because they're here, there, and everywhere with this woman and that one and this man and who else? And they've made themselves enemies doing dirt, telling lies, exaggerating, covering up. Where did they learn all this? Uh-oh. And God says, I need all of you all, ooh, Jesus, to repent this day. Because see, you're running with the enemy, you're making excuses for the enemy, you're having sex with the enemy, you're lying for the enemy, you're covering up for the enemy, you're denying things because the enemy told you you better deny or else. Repent, 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 saith the Lord. And some of you all, we don't need to remind you about your baptism, but you did get baptized. And did it mean anything to you when you went down in that water and came up? supposedly cleansed and white as snow some folks got baptized all right but they didn't get baptized walking with the one true god they got baptized walking with lucifer and they will make excuses for the enemy they will support the enemy they will create shows and music and create other types of propaganda to support the works of darkness and it sounds good and it looks good and it makes you feel like, woo, you're one in the hood. But the reality is, is Lucifer's at work. And some of you all don't want to deal with that. You don't want to deal with it. You run from it using drugs and alcohol and sex and buying things and more things and more things. 
because you know you sold your soul to the devil oh yes we got those who come through just listening because they know they can't comment because their handlers control they know they can only save us so much because their handlers say "Uh oh wait a minute now what you listening to Not only do you repent and remember what you did, believer, when you got baptized, what that all meant. But as you're walking with the one true God, you know that when you accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit. So that Holy Spirit that's speaking to you about that person who you're making excuses for right away, you should shut your mouth. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. I, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that the enemy, <laughs> right? Some folks have to go so far as to call some folk out and say the enemy. Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so. Stop defending the enemy. And some people felt so convicted that I can't keep doing this. I feel like this message appeal, uh, appeals to the one who is in uh, the uh, law profession, more specifically a lawyer, who you keep making excuses, defending, building up cases for guilty people. And it hurts when you know that a guilty person has gotten off. It hurts because you know in your core being that that person should have never, ever seen freedom. But you did a fine job, right? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Those who are believers know that when you are dealing with anybody who you know is a child of darkness, God used the Holy Spirit to speak to you. You felt in your spirit. You got people who confirm this sort of thing that you're not supposed to be spreading the lies of the demonic. You're supposed to be spreading what? The word of God. And the word of God comes in so many ways that it doesn't sound like scripture passages out of the Bible. Truth is truth. Truth is truth. And the truth is, is that the Lord wants us not to be disobedient, but be obedient. And when he's speaking his word in our spirit and saying guilty is charged concerning the enemy and not to break bread and not to be signing contracts with the enemy and all of that, we're supposed to listen. But you know what? You reap what you sow. And what is in darkness comes out in the light. And people only get away with things, but for so long before their conscience catches up to them, before their stomach churns and their head aches, before the, the uh, uh, divorce and separations and losing money and all that. Because years and years of telling lies, years and years of covering up, years and years of making excuses for the enemy. Making excuses for the enemy's children of darkness. That force of evil that comes over a man or a woman that says, do this. And they do it rather than stand down, saith the Lord. This is not a battle for you. Matter of fact, if you was to fight this particular battle, you're not winning anything. You just might end up being in your grave before it's all said and done. God's mercy. Come on. Making excuses for the enemy overseas, making excuses for the enemy at the church, making excuses for the husband who's the enemy, making excuses for the children who are doing nothing but dirty things in the community, making excuses for the teachers. Oh, because the teachers want to support the teachers, making excuses for who? Come on, we could go on and on. Making excuses for the politicians, making excuses for the for the government, making excuses for anything and anyone, you know, just so long as I get something out the deal. Mm hmm. The believer knows that he or she is supposed to be praying. When you know that there's an enemy in a camp or you even suspect it, you're supposed to be praying. You're supposed to be covering yourself as well as your children and anybody else with the blood of Jesus. Because you don't know the day or the hour that the enemy is going to strike or retreat. Resist the devil and he will flee. 
And as we get into the word of God and as we are around people of the Lord who can also pray, stand in the gap, intercessors. We also have to be guarded. Because the enemy doesn't always look like, ooh, spooky and dark and disturbing and got crazy looking teeth and all that. But the enemy is usually very nice looking. And has something that all of us would say, oh, that is so great and so wonderful. Woo! You've got to equip yourself. I'm here in Ephesians 6. You've got to equip yourself. Spiritual armor has to be on. You cannot be that one that volunteers to speak for the devil of a man or woman. I'm sorry, you didn't have my back, <laughs> enemy. When I needed you most, you didn't speak up. See, you, you will know who your enemies are, as I've said in other audio, when one, they're not standing up for you. Mm-mm. After all I did for you and when I needed you, you weren't there. You'll know who your enemies are when they, uh, sorry, I can't help you. You know who your enemies are. I can't pay you back. I don't have it. And they're making lies up and more lies. You know who your enemies are when you heard through the grapevine that so-and-so who was supposed to be your ride or die was talking negatively about you was cussing, was finding fault with you, was talking about how you're no good and you're this and you're that. You know who your enemies are when they could care less, when they act nonchalant, when they lack empathy and sympathy. You know who your enemies are when they're not coming around to defend you or make excuses for you. Going right back to point one, <laughs> Lord Jesus, they set traps for you when they start showing their hate, when you start pointing out their wrongs, they start getting some other folks to help them bring you down because I'm sorry, but you got too close. There was information that you wasn't supposed to know. Lord Jesus. Rather than making excuses for the enemy, the believer knows that you're supposed to be living a holy life. So I got to disconnect, disassociate from you, enemy. I can't be hanging around you. You do all sorts of drugs. If you know that's your weakness, you know you're not supposed to be around somebody like that or alcohol. I can't be around you because I know what you're going to do. You're going to invite me to drink. Or if you're trying to stop smoking, I can't be around you. Because I know what you're going to do. You're going to tempt me to smoke. You see. <laughs> when it's all said and done. We all want to do what? Go to heaven. That's what we want to do. We want to go to heaven. And some folks say. Oh come on now. That's a mystical place. It's fake. It's just something just to ease your mind. When life gets you down. No it's not a mystical place. You know. And uh, it's just there to ease your mind. It's a real place. Those of us who've come close enough to death. We know that there is definitely a world beyond this one. I'm sorry that some folks haven't gotten close enough to death. To be able to truly experience. What a life beyond this world looks like. But let me tell you something. A little glimpse. The little glimpse, and I mean, it wasn't even heaven because we didn't we don't get to see heaven, but we know that there is something, something that ushers us toward it. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it's like a portal or a stairwell or staircase or I mean, so many people have got so many different reports. For me, I saw Jacob's ladder. And I also saw a white light. But no, I'm, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm not nowhere cl clean enough to even get to see actual heaven. And God ain't going to allow any of us to do too much of anything until judgment takes place anyway. But I'm just just encouraging some of you all that 
this temptation of wanting to make excuses for people who have abused and used yourself or others is sick. People who have lied and covered up and denied and blamed and they've done this repeatedly over and over again and you still are in support and you making excuses, whether it's your family, your friends, our nation, government leaders, I mean, religious leaders, owners, investors, anybody, and you're carrying on like this. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And like I said, repent. Get yourself right with the Lord. Remember what you did when you got baptized. And if you haven't been baptized and you really want to walk this walk, it's time to show everybody (laughs) you're ready. And get in front of some folks and get baptized. And ask the Lord, even before you get baptized, for the Holy Spirit to speak into your spirit, live through you and use you. And rather than spread the lies of the enemy and make excuses, you spread the word of God. And whatever the Lord downloads in your spirit, that's what you speak to the enemy. Because I've had to do that. I went through that process. Soon after all of this wonderful stuff was happening, I was confessing sin, repenting, you know, got baptized many years ago, you know, received the Holy Spirit and all of that. Let me tell you, I started just exposing the lies of the enemy and then I started speaking the truth that the Lord put in my spirit and it doesn't always sound like the Bible passages but the meaning is still very much there and then of course having that relationship with the one true God and the people of God more so than spending time with these enemies with these worldly people with these people who don't mean you well and that will also get you to where you need to be and then as you're doing all of this People will start to see that you're different and that you're living the kind of life that is righteous and true and honest, right? And then, of course, anticipating the day when the Lord will take you on home. Hallelujah. Heaven is where you want to go. Hell is very much real. And there's people who have been close to hell, too. And they were so scared that they came back and warned all of us who they saw in hell. People who you least expect. And that's worth checking out. Doing some research on heaven and hell. And before it's all said and done. Some of those uh, videos and audios that's out there on the internet. Will straighten you up real quick. But I'm telling you. No more excuses. No more excuses for that lying person. Who claims that they're a child of God. But none of us can tell. No more excuses sitting up there saying, well, what had happened was, and well, she been through so much, and that's why I told the lie and all this other stuff. No, and no more sitting up there going to the Lord saying, well, Lord, you know what I did today, and the reason why I did it today was because, well, you know how, you know, she or he is, and the Lord's like, that's nothing but an enemy. Leave him alone. Disconnect, disassociate, or Stop talking so much to that person because sometimes people cannot leave atmospheres. So the Lord will tell us you don't need to be doing so much talking because there was been there's been times in my life where I could not leave. I knew the person was an enemy, but I couldn't leave at that particular time. So the Lord said, guard your mouth. And I was on spiritual fast and I also was uh, going to a couple churches just to be able to get through the day. Because I knew, I knew the enemy did not want my presence around. I knew that the enemy was coming up with just more dramas and traumas to psychologically break me down. I knew the enemy was putting folks up to saying things and doing things that was just disrespectful and to provoke me to wrath. And I said, enough is enough. And some of you all, you've got to take the higher road in Christ and listen and obey him rather than obey men and women because all they do is get you into trouble just like back in the day when you was in school and there were those people in the background right sitting way in the back always up to no good sitting in the back of the bus notice they was always in the back and there were people who was 
who was trying to speak good sense to you, telling you, you don't need to be in the back any longer, be in the front. And for those of you who listen, that's why your success is to this day. For those who weren't listening, that's why you keep having all sorts of issues because you don't want to be in the front, paying attention to the teacher, being at the feet of Christ. Humble yourself. Move pride out the way. The enemy's pride is also getting some people in trouble. He's prideful. She's prideful. Now you getting out there being prideful just like them, making excuses for their behaviors, making excuses for, once again, the stories that they tell, making excuses for why, once again, they done spent up money that they had no business spending up. Once again, protecting the children of darkness or those who are backsliders or have fallen away from the door by making excuses for them. There are parents that do that with their own backsliding wayward children and guess what you too are going to reap what you've sown because there's consequences for protecting children that should not be protected and I don't mean protected from dangerous people I'm talking about children who need to face the uh, devilish things that they've done the disrespectful things that they've done stop making excuses for them they've got to suffer through the the uh, consequences of their sins we're not talking about torturous abusive type of behavior we're talking about simply you get more homework than the other ones because you don't want to do your homework like you're supposed to or you end up in summer school or you end up having all sorts of um, difficulties because you didn't want to listen so you get your stuff taken away you see setting those consequences up for them and there'll be better people because of it well i thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen no more making excuses for the enemy the enemy if you um, caught hold of this message the enemy is basically the devil that puts a lot of people up to doing all sorts of things we cannot be making excuses for him and then saying that well we're just helping no way no we are not all we're doing is we're putting ourselves on a fast track toward a lot of problems and worse, hell. So I thank you once again for listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. If you feel so moved to give, please do so. We do welcome giving on this channel. Blessings to you.